Hello friends, today's video is an options video. We're going to be looking at the options on the new third generation Porsche Cayenne. And as you know, Porsche <laughs> charge a lot for options and there are a lot of options on the Cayenne. In fact, there are 102,000 possible combinations on the Cayenne alone. So it's understandable that people become a little overwhelmed when trying to configure these cars, particularly if you're a first time Porsche driver. Uh, and of course, Porsche charge a lot for options. The average uh, price of an option on the Cayenne is over $1,000, and there are 160 possible options, tickable options. So people often go in thinking, hey, I'm going to buy a $65,000 base Cayenne, but leave the showroom spending $85,000, $95,000. You know, it's easy to put $40,000 of options on these cars. So that's what I'm going to help you with today, help you understand what options are of value to you so you don't end up buying a bunch of options that you will never ever use. And I'm going to start by saying that no option is a must have. Uh, the Cayenne in particular is a very well specced car just on its own. You buy the base model with no options, it is a beautiful vehicle with many many features. In fact they added a bunch of cost features, features that you had to pay for in the previous generation as standard like they always do. So there's uh, I think there's 32 new new standard features on the uh, the new Cayenne. So uh, just without any options, they're a fine vehicle. But it is so tempting. And of course, when you're at a dealership, they're saying, oh, maybe you should get this, maybe you should get that. And it's very easy to ramp up that price. And of course, the more you know, the better off you are. If you can go into a dealership already knowing exactly how you want to specify your car, you spend less time with the dealer and you're better, to, you're better able to negotiate yourself a better deal, uh, which is what this is all about. Uh, empowering you to get a better deal on the car that you're spending so much money on. So let's get started. And of course, this is going to be <laughs> an excruciatingly long video, I'm so um, but if nothing else, you can use this video uh, to discipline unruly children, <laughs> threaten them by making them watch this video. Works for the gorillas, that's for sure. So let's get started. And we're going to look first of all at the four models that are available here in North America. There are other models in other markets and other models will be coming to North America shortly. Uh, we have the base Cayenne, the 300 odd horsepower, the Cayenne S uh, which has the 440 horsepower, the turbo the f uh, which is the powerful fast one, 550 horsepower, and of course the Cayenne E hybrid which is a, a pretty Interesting option because far more fuel efficient, but still as powerful so it sits between the, the Cayenne and the Cayenne S uh, for in price rise. So some great options there. Most people will be buying the base Cayenne. Uh, it is by far the most popular model and there's nothing wrong with that. The new six cylinder turbocharged three liter engine is a sweetheart. There's plenty of power there. It's a lovely car. As I said, without, even, even without any options, it is a beautiful luxury car to own. To own. So I'm going to be configuring the base today because it has the most options. Uh, by, by that what I mean is uh, as you go up in the range, there's more standard options as part of the price with the turbo of course having the most options. And I also say that there's going to be more models coming to the North, North American market shortly. Uh, we're going to see the Cayenne e-hybrid, uh, sorry, the Cayenne Turbo e-hybrid coming and there'll be GTS models and I think we're going to see some electric models in the Cayenne probably in three to four years time as well. So let's get started with configuring the base model. So let's start with colors and actually it's a pretty lackluster range of colors available at the moment. Uh, nothing too exciting there. Uh, but there will be more colors being added shortly. And if you're interested to know what other colors will be added to the Cayenne range, pop across to the configurator of the Panamera. The Panamera leads the way in technology and options. So the Panamera has, I think, almost twice as many color options. So most of those color options that are in the Panamera will be appearing in the Cayenne early next year, I think. So if you really want a color that's not available at the moment and you see it on the on the Panamera you just have to wait a few months and that will be available. Meantime, uh, well there are a bunch of colors. <laughs> it turns out everybody just buys the Cayenne in black anyway. Yes, a friend of mine that works at Porsche pointed out to me that the black Cayennes, the, the color black is, is more popular than the rest of the colors combined in the Cayenne and I would believe that because when I am my, at my own uh, local dealership, I look out at the second hand lot, it's just a sea of black Cayennes as far as the eye can see. So we can talk about colors, 
but most of you are just going to buy either the jet black or the standard black, which is fine. It's the nice in that color. Um, but there is a new color, the Biscay Blue, which looks like it's going to be very popular. This color here, very, very pretty color. Uh, I see a lot of those even in my local dealership already. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty neutral color. It's a very nice color in, in real life. If you're looking for something different, uh, the, <laughs> the color that is definitely going to be the unicorn color of this generation is this purple. I am sure not too many people are going to buy the purple, but if you want to be the, the cayenne that stands out in the, at the PDA meeting, <laughs> then purple's the way to go. For the purpose of this video, we're just going to stick with the blue, which is an $800 metallic option. The metallic colors, as you can see, are $800, and then there'll be a bunch of extra special colors coming out shortly for the $3,000, and then later on you can get the paint to sample colors, which will probably be between five to $7,000. But no harm in just getting this, the standard black, although the, the jet black metallic does have a nice sheen to it, particularly in the light and in the, in the bright sunlight. So I think it's worth paying the $800 to get the better black over the standard black, but whatever. Save your money and get the standard black if you like. On to wheels and rims. This is pretty much a taste thing. I'm not going to tell you what is the best wheel or rim. It, it comes down to your personal preferences and tastes. What I will tell you is that they really fall into two categories, the 19 and 20 inch and the 21 and the 22 inch are two separate categories. Uh, and you get slightly different trim levels with those. As soon as you jump up to a 21 inch wheel, you'll see that there's this uh, uh, trim called a wheel arch extension, which is added, which is a painted uh, arch on the wheel, just extends, just, just looks a little fancier, uh, which you'd hope you'd get something when you're paying <laughs> five to seven thousand uh, dollars for a wheel and tire package. So the larger the rim the better arguably the better the car looks but also there's a lot to be said for the 19 and 20 inch rims. They're a lot harder wearing. If you have a tendency to hit curbs or drive over things or you drive a lot in inclement weather the 19 and 20 inch wheels are probably something that you should consider over the fancy big wheels. Plus as you can see, the 19 inch wheels free. As soon as you go up to the 20 inch wheels, you're just paying $1,700. Then you go up to the 21 inch wheels, you're paying $5,000. And then of course, up to the $6,000 range. There's no bad choice. Actually, there is a bad choice. <laughs> I lie. This wheel here. <laughs> you know somebody's gonna do this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, you have to have a specific taste to want to paint your wheels the body color of the car. <laughs> it's very ghetto. Um, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. So, uh, 20 or 19 inch wheels, if, if you are hard on your vehicle, um, or 21 or 22 inch wheels, if you're rich. <laughs> uh, we'll leave it on the, uh, on the 20 inch. These ones here. I like these ones here. Okay, on to the interior options. And just like the exterior colors, there are more interior colors coming, but there's plenty of nice options here. The most popular ones are the standard interiors, which the gray and black are free. Nothing wrong with those. Uh, leather seats, leather armrests, but the door panels, the dashboard, um, the center console, that's all rubber or, uh, or other materials. And, and you, you really can't tell, you know, there's no, it, it's, not, it's not bad having the standard interior. In fact, the standard interior is by far and away the hardest wearing. So if you've got animals or kids or adults that act like kids um, and you, you don't want to be having your interior wrecked, buy the standard interior. It is very hard wearing. And then there's this $390 two-tone interior, which I really like. I like this two-tone interior. It's a little lighter, it's a little different, and it's pretty cheap. Uh, the beige interior is pretty cool. And then you go up to the more expensive leather interiors, and the leather adds leather to the dash. Uh, to the center stack, all, all the whole door panels, leather. It's very nice, but it is very expensive. $3,750, or for the two tones, you're over $4,000. But the two tones are beautiful. Um, I particularly like uh, the, the red and black two-tone. Uh, such an amazing interior. It really wows you when you get in the car. And, of course, my personal favorite, which is in my own uh, Porsche 911, is the blue and chalk. Now, the blue and chalk is a stunning interior, no question about it. However, it is probably the least hard wearing interior because it's such a light interior. So once again, 
you, you're tramping kids through this car, you probably want to go with something else. Uh, it is possible to keep the interior nice. I have my dogs in, in the car and they're always on these seats and I can keep them pretty, pretty clean. I've done 20,000 miles in my car and they still look pretty new. So it's not impossible, but yeah, def definitely not the hardest wearing interior. Stick with, stick with the darker colors if you're gonna have that. And then finally, uh, there's this club leather, uh, which is Porsche's new name for natural leather. And what I mean by natural leather is it has the natural grain, the natural look. There's more imperfections in this leather, but it is beautiful. It looks beautiful. It looks like, looks like leather should look, and it feels like leather should, should look. It's a little softer. Uh, it's, it's very pretty. But $5,700 is expensive, and of course it only comes in brown. And brown is an acquired taste for some people. I like it. I like it, uh, particularly with, with darker colors. Brown looks really good. Oh, the lighter colors are good as well. But um, yeah, that's a lot of money for, for a leather option, $5,000. Most people, uh, particularly on the base Cayenne, are gonna stick to the uh, standard interior, which is fine. Onto the seats, and I think the seats are one of the most important options. And frankly, I'm a little disappointed with the seats in the current generation. Now, first thing I'll say about the seats is that if you have experience with the sports cars within Porsche, the seats on the Cayenne are completely different, completely different design, nothing similar about them at all. So don't think that just because you've been in a Boxster or a 911, uh, it's gonna be a similar seat in the Cayenne. No, they're totally different design. And there's three options currently here in the US. The eight-way and the 14-way seats are basically the same seat. Uh, they just have the 14-way adds lumbar support and the ability to move the extender on the front for your thigh support. The 14-way also adds the memory package, which is awesome, but you can separately add the memory package on the 8-ways as well. So the 8-ways is a perfectly fine seat choice for free, but my favorite is definitely the 18-way. Now, the 18-way is obviously more expensive, $2,300, including the memory package, and you won't see many of the 18-ways in showrooms. Uh, they generally spec the 14-ways or the 8-ways because they fit the most body shapes. The safe option is definitely eight way or 14 way. The 18 way, because of the bigger bolsters, if you're a bigger person or a very tall person, the 18 ways can be uncomfortable because they, they, they encroach too much on your body. Uh, but I personally find the 18 ways to be more comfortable because there's softer padding uh, underneath the leather. The 14 way and the eight ways I, I find, particularly in this latest generation, to be quite stiff, quite hard. An hour of sitting on those seats with my bony butt, uh, and I'm starting to wriggle and feel a little uncomfortable. Now, I'm sure they will improve over time. With wear and tear, they'll become a little softer, but uh, Porsche, make your seats softer for the, for the love. <laughs> Don't make your seats so uncomfortable. You are known for comfortable seats, and suddenly these have become quite stiff and hard. Just the ones I've driven so far, hopefully they'll improve that and, and your experience might be completely different. But if you can, spend a bit of time sitting in the seats in a showroom because it's so important to have, have these cars comfortable, particularly if you're doing long distances. But as I said, eight ways and 14 ways, very similar seats, uh, very nice design. They don't provide any real lateral support or anything. They're just meant to be a comfortable seat and hopefully they get a little softer over time. Uh, the downside of the 18 ways, which I find the most comfortable, apart from the cost, is that because the bolsters are so large and because this is such a tall vehicle, you're going to scrape the bolsters every time you get in and out. So they will wear out and they will show wear a lot more quickly the, than the 14 or the 8 ways. So difficult decisions there, but no harm in getting the 8 ways, that's for sure. On to the packages. Packages is really a North America thing. You don't see this in a lot of other countries. And the packages are simply just a way of saving money uh, if you're looking to purchase all of the items that are in the packages. So if you look at the package list and you go, wow, I'm definitely going to get all of those items, then yeah, get the package because it will save you money. And here's the math on that. So the premium package, all of those items, if you add them all up, they come to $9,470. The package costs, of course, $6,610. So that saves you $2,860. So a reasonable savings. Not that there's nothing reasonable about Porsche options. They're just so ludicrously expensive. 
But if you are sure that you're going to get all of those options, hey, take the $3,000 savings. Uh, not much about buying a Porsche is ever going to be is ever going to be reasonable. And the premium package plus, which is a lot of premium items, there's a lot in there, uh, is even more so. So if you're sure that you're going to get all of that stuff, which honestly, you shouldn't be getting all that stuff. But if you're sure you're going to get all that stuff, uh, that adds up to $13,610. They're charging $9,100 no, $9, for it. So that's a savings of $4,510. So a reasonable savings if you're sure you're going to get all those. The thing about the premium packet is that it is a bit of a scam in a way because I'm quite certain that nobody wants all of that stuff uh, most of the time. So they think, oh, well, I'm going to get three quarters of it. I might as well go the whole hog and Porsche gets you one way or the other. So be very cautious about the premium package. They do seem like a great deal, but man, that's $10,000 almost added to the price of your car. Whew, it's a lot of money. So onto the exterior, the first, <laughs> first option is one of only two free options <laughs> on the Cayenne and it's nothing too exciting. It is as you'd expect. It's just deleting of the word uh, Cayenne off the back of the, uh, of the car. Why would you do that? Two reasons. Maybe because you like the cleaner look of no name, uh, no, no model designation on the back, but more likely, and I know I shouldn't say this, but more likely people tend, I notice that people tend to delete the model designation on the base model only. Not always, but people like to hide the fact that they've bought the cheaper model. And there's no shame in spending $70,000 on a car. It's not like it's a cheap car. Leave, leave it on there. It's, I think it's cool, but yeah, you can take it off for that cleaner look. Um, Zero dollar cost. Next is a ridiculous option, the sport design package. And there's, there's two of these. There's one that, that's sort of a cut down version, which is the next option. But the sport design option, uh, the sport design package, $5,660. Adds a different shape front end uh, and uh, painted edges, the extended wheel arches and changes to the, the back end as well. What a huge waste of money. Uh, mostly because, and this is just my opinion, you might just love it, and if you love it, totally go and get it. Look at it. It looks like the old model when you put the sport design package on. With the, without it, it looks sportier. It looks more streamlined. It's got the nice uh, silver grills. Totally. It totally looks better without it. I don't know. It's just a <laughs> personal preference thing if you like it do it. But I think it definitely looks better without the sport design. They have screwed up on that. And on the back as well. The back, uh, I think the back looks, I don't know. I th with the sport design package, they redesign the back and you get these this little uh, fancy bit down here. That I guess that's quite nice. Uh, and with the front fascia version, which is the cut down version, they just paint that back end. They don't give you that fancy bit there. So that's the difference between the $5,000 and the $3,000 sport design packages. Body kits, basically. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Not a fan, but yeah, each, each to their own. Some people will love that. Uh, the next option, LED headlights. This is a misleading option. It, it reads, LED headlights including Porsche Dynamic Light System, PD alias. So you look at that and you think, oh, yes, I'll definitely get LED headlights. Well, stop, because as I mentioned, this model has many standard options now. And LED headlights, is, which used to be a high cost option, is now standard across the range. So you're getting LED headlights anyway. So by ticking this option, you're not adding LED headlights, you're adding the Porsche Dynamic Lighting System. What is the Porsche Dynamic Lighting System? It is the system that allows the headlights to turn slightly into corners. Uh, so if you're driving particularly windy roads, uh, where there's no, no light around, it is very nice. It, it turns the lights into the corners. What I will say is that having driven a few of these at night now, I think the old system and the previous generation worked better. This doesn't turn the lights that much as you take a corner. It turns it just a little bit. 
So hmm, I don't know that it's worthwhile. Uh, I like PDLS, I've, I find it very useful. I've got it on my personal car and it really turns the lights in, but on the Cayennes, eh, not so much. But $1,000, it's not the most expensive option ever, but I wouldn't be, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're umming and ahhing whether you need to get that, I would go, go with no. Uh, the next option is definitely, here in the US at least, a very controversial option. Let's have a look at the description they have here. <laughs> if you read down, skip past what it, it's meant to do, uh, all these fancy features. Now, first of all, it says uh, 84 pixels, and I think they say it's 52 or 53 individual lights. I don't know. There's some discrepancy as to how many lights are actually involved with this very fancy matrix beam design. Uh, but if you look carefully, you'll see blah, 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 full LED matrix functionality. Uh, individual operation of the 84 LEDs is limited in the US market. That is their get out of jail free for the fact that this doesn't work at all, really, here in the US. Uh, that's right. I've been driving uh, a model with this particular um, fancy $2,000 option, and I can't see any difference between the standard and this option. And that's because uh, some sort of federal reg regulation is preventing them from using full power on these lights. When will they fix that? Who knows? Uh, the dealerships sort of say six months to a year, <laughs> but it could be anything. So I wouldn't waste your money on this in the US at least. Now, talking to a friend of mine who's got this on his car in Europe, he says, it's pretty good. <laughs> I was not encouraged by the words pretty. <laughs> and good. <laughs> I was hoping he would say, ah, it's amazing. Uh, but no, it's just a headlight. And what I will say about both sets of the LED light options is that the high beam is still pretty weak. There is, and that's once again, US regulations. They regulate how bright high beams can be on cars here, and it's pretty pathetic. So you can do an illegal modification to these cars um, by, by people change, doing a software hack and releasing the full power of the high beams. And they basically double in power, but it's pretty tricky to do. But something to look into if you're driving a lot of off back road streets or country roads and use high beam a lot, it might be worth trying to get the, uh, the full power of these LED lights released uh, if you own these cars in the US. So that's enough on lights. Certainly, yeah, I don't bother with the LED matrix lights for now. Who knows when they're going to fix those. They're really no brighter or more impressive than the standard LED lights. In my opinion, you may, you may disagree. Oh, but while I'm on the LED lights, I also took the LED matrix headlights and parked it next to my own Porsche 911, which has got the older style Xenon lights on it, and used a light meter to see how much brighter they are. And on the Cayenne, no brighter. Uh, well, there's, there's a thin line of, of super brightness, the overall flood of the lights, no brighter than the old Xenon, so not terribly impressed with these LED lights. Nice, nice lights, but not wildly bright, so maybe it's a good thing you're not blinding a whole lot of people on the oncoming traffic. There are two other LED light options, the LED lights in black and the LED matrix lights in black. Uh, for a little more money, basically what you're doing is you're tinting these uh, front glass bits here. If you've got a dark colored light car or you've got a very light like a white car sometimes that looks effective it's kind of expensive though yeah. okay comfort access comfort access is the uh, access with the key so you just have to touch the handle to open it and you don't have to put the key in the ignition to start it you can just leave your key in your purse your your man <laughs> your man purse your, your wallet your pocket whatever um, you never have to take the key out you can open and close the door lock the car without ever pressing any of the buttons. Is it a must have? Of course not. The downside of this system is that it does leave the car slightly more vulnerable to, uh, to being stolen, hacking, that certainly the comfort access system people say uh, is more easily, you can e more easily get into the car. I don't, I don't know about that myself. Uh, some people refuse to get this for that reason alone, it's something to consider. I like the comfort access, I like not having to find my keys to unlock the car and I think it all works very nicely. Uh, $900, <laughs> once again, <laughs> twice as much as what other, other um, car manufacturers uh, 
charge you for this 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 option. Uh, next is clear towel lights. What a ripoff <laughs> is what I'll say to this option. Hang on. Here we go. Clear towel lights. As you guess, it just takes away the red bit in the towel lights. It looks nice. Now. You can get the clear towel lights from third party suppliers for I think about $600 and do it yourself. Maybe a way of saving money. But yeah, this is just a personal preference and looks. This is, has no, no functionality as such. Next is the panoramic sunroof or panoramic, panoramic roof system as they describe it here. $1,850. That sounds like an expensive sunroof, Nick. Well, it is, but it's pretty cool. Uh, it stretches all the way from the front seat to the back seat and it really makes the interior of the car a lot more feel a lot more roomy and airy because of all that natural light coming in. I'm a big fan of big sunroofs because of that reason. It really, I don't know, just makes the car feel so much more roomy. I like it, I like it. But uh, what are the downsides? Well, obviously the cost, it's almost $2,000. But it's a nice sunroof and it's got its own uh, sunshade, so if it's getting a little hot. It is a tinted sunroof to start with, so it's not like it's going to sunburn your head. But there is a sunshade if you want to close it. It's a pretty cool system. I don't know that too many people ever open the sunroof in a Cayenne, but it's just nice to have that, that, that light coming in. Personal preference. Next is a two option option. <laughs> uh, the thermal and noise insulated glass. As you can see, it is window tinting, basically, and it's nice. It's nice. It's not like third party where they put it on the glass. It's all, it's, the glass is made that way, uh, it, and it really does two things. Obviously, it's, it's preventing as much light getting in the car, and secondly, it's providing uh, privacy. It's very difficult to see into the interior of the car with this option. Uh, it's darker on the back seats and the rear window than on the front, the, the passenger driver and the front passenger. Uh, because of US regulations, but it's a very nice option if you've got very small children You don't want the Sun on them. This is the way to go if you want some privacy in the back seat This is the way to go and it adds the noise insulated glass Which is just thicker glass and it does make a noticeable difference in reducing the amount of road noise that enters the cabin This is a this is an option for you audio files as well the people that want to listen to your music inside the car You want less road noise this is the option to get $1,130. Next is soft closed doors. I'm losing my voice already. We're not even one third of the way through this video. Oh, this is not looking good. Soft, clo soft closed doors. Soft closed doors is definitely a luxury option. You just uh, gently push the door closed and then it sucks the door in. It's very nice. Um, it means that you're not slamming doors. If you've got a thing against slamming doors, and these are big heavy doors, so they do need a bit of a slam to get them closed. Uh, this removes that need. It, the door will always close correctly. It's nice if you've got children that are slamming doors or you're worried about them slamming their hands in the, in the doors and every door just gets, you just have to push it closed and it closes itself. Kind of expensive at almost $800 though, mm. uh, but yeah, a nice luxury option. The trailer hitch with, without tow ball, $600, $660. If you're going to be doing towing, it is so worthwhile getting the trailer hitch put on from the factory. It is such a nice... Uh, it is such a nice feature, so well done, much better than getting third party put on later on. Those, those can sometimes be a bit eh, iffy. Yeah, get the, get the, get the factory one, it's, it's very nicely done, it just hides away underneath the car there. Uh, and then you supply the tow ball depending on what you're going to be towing. Uh, actually not a bad price, $660 you're probably going to spend more than that having one retrofitted later on. <laughs> Next one is door handles in high gloss black. Remember back in the 80s and the 90s <laughs> when you had to pay extra to have your door handles painted the same color as the body of your car? Well, it seems that we've done a 180 degrees and we're back to now having to pay to get them black again. Well, not really. This is the high gloss black. And this is a rabbit hole you've got to be careful that you're going down because, well, $350 isn't much. You're not going to stop there. Once you're started down the high gloss black route, <laughs> you're in for a few thousand dollars because you, it's just not one thing. So why do people want or are interested in high gloss black door handles or the other high gloss black features? Particularly, it looks effective as a contrast on lighter color cars. Looks okay on this light blue, but if you've got a white car or a yellow car, not that yellow is an option, thankfully, on the Cayenne, um, 
on the white cars it looks, it looks very effective. It's a real contrast. Uh, they really stand out and look great. But as I say, it's, it's never just one thing with the high gloss black stuff. People go nuts and I see cars configured with the high gloss black and I'm, why is this car $20,000 next to the, as opposed to the one next to it? Ah, they've got all the high gloss stuff. Ah, that's why. So yeah, be careful getting, starting down this track. It's, it's expensive. Uh, and then there's the roof rails in aluminium, roof rails in high gloss black and roof rails uh, with the roof transport, two different options there. So we'll, we'll talk about all of these four options at once. The roof transport system on the Cayenne is excellent and actually reasonable value for money. It's, it's just so well engineered and handles a significant load. Uh, is not noisy, is easy to take off and on, so much better than third party products. Definitely get this if you're thinking of putting a bunch of canoes or whatever on the roof of your Cayenne. So nice. Porsche have done such a great job with the roof transport system. Uh, exterior mirrors painted. What on earth is this, Nick? Well, I'll flip to the, uh, the front and you'll see. So there's the black, uh, it's a matte black underneath the mirrors here. You tick this and it paints the entire mirror. <laughs> Who is going to notice? I do not know. $660. Maybe important to some people, not so important to me. And then <laughs> exterior mirrors, high gloss black. There you go. There's another high gloss black. Just so many options that can be high gloss black. Fuel cap with aluminium look finish. $160. They've slightly reduced the price of this terrible option. <laughs> uh, it's not a terrible option. It's just... And it's a cheap option, so I'm surprised quite a few people, few people get this. So, newsflash, no one's ever going to know because it's the fuel cap. It's behind the fuel cap door. <laughs> it's only when you're refueling the car, you take that cap off and it's, it's a, still a cheap plastic cap, but it's just got a, a silver look to it. If you really are not sure about this option, you can actually get this option later on. Uh, either through a Porsche supplier or a third-party supplier, they're $80 for the exact same cap. So save yourself some money and just get it third-party. Oh, side, <laughs> side windows and high gloss black. Yes, another $400 there as we've talked about. Yeah, it's this trim here. As I said, <laughs> high gloss black, it's just everywhere. Uh, stainless steel skid plate front and rear. This is sort of part of the four-wheel drive stuff, which I'll talk about shortly. What, I mean, the off-roading stuff, which I'll talk about shortly. But, but really, it's more of a, a, a look. It's, it is a noticeable change to the front end of the car. It is very nice. It is very expensive, $1,560. I'm wondering whether there's a third-party version of this that's cheaper and easy to put on. Uh, far more noticeable on the front. The front, front plate is really noticeable, very nice. A uh, bit of bling on the front. On the rear, really hard to tell that you've got it. I don't know that it's worth getting for the rear. It, it, $1,560 is a lot for a, a, a shiny bit of metal. Uh, <laughs> but I guess, arguably it's supposed to be to protect that front lip if you're doing a bit of off-roading. But I would say that without it, you're probably better off because the, the matte black plastic is probably just as hard wearing as the stainless steel skid plate, which is going to show marks. I don't know. It's kind of, kind of a nice bling option, but very expensive. I can't imagine too many people are going to go too far on that. And then the uh, Porsche logo on the back in black. Yeah, just effectively changing the, the, the words Porsche in the back to black. This is also effective on very light colored cars, eh, $300. Who cares, really? Okay, so that's it for the exterior options. On to the performance options. Now, before we get deep into the weeds of the performance options, let me just set some expectations here. Uh, well, the Porsche Cayenne does have the Porsche name and it is a Porsche car. It is not a sports car. You probably will not be taking this vehicle on a track. Maybe if you've got the turbo model, sometimes you see them tracked, but not very often. Certainly base model, <laughs> you've got to be careful about putting sports options on these cars because, you know, it's, an, it's, a, it's a luxury car more than a sports car. So you want to put luxury options on it. You're going to get more use out of them than sports options because frankly, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to be racing this. It's, it's a big heavy SUV. It cannot overcome the laws of physics. Uh, it's, 
never going to be a small, nimble sports car. So don't put sports car options, don't spend too much on sports car options is what I'm saying. But the first option is not a sports car option, it's the off-road package. And this can be a little deceiving as well. The off-road package does not turn this <laughs> luxury SUV into an off-roading vehicle. Um, it's really not designed to go off the road. Uh, it does have all-wheel drive, it is an SUV, so it is off higher off the ground, but it doesn't have any of the low ratio stuff. And how many people take their Cayenne off-roading anyway? Very few people. So what the off-road package does, it adds a bunch of protection underneath the car. So you're going along, off-roading, you're bumping into rocks and things, uh, you're gonna break something under the car. This just adds some, some splash plates and some protection plates to, to important parts under the car. It doesn't add to the off-road ability of the car in any, in any way, just add some protection under the car. So yeah, if you're going to be off-roading this for some bizarre reason, that might be worth the $2,000 you pay for that. Turn that off for now. Uh, eight speed, I don't know why they show the eight speed Tiptronic uh, as an option. There was a time when you could get the Cayenne back in the day in a manual transmission. How, how cool would that be? <laughs> Those days are gone. The eight speed Tiptronic, beautiful, smooth, lovely transmission. Ah, oh, so, so nice. Um, yep, I'd get it in that even if there was a, a manual option, I think. Well, the manual option would be pretty cool. Okay, on to some of the <laughs> sports car options. The Porsche Active Suspension Management, $2,000. Hmm, this is definitely an option that I'm, eh, I don't know that anyone actually needs. You probably use it once and never use it again. Stiffens up the dampeners, uh, stiffens up the suspension, three settings. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't do too much for the body roll. It just, just makes, gives it a harsher ride. So if you were taking this car on a track, God knows why, <laughs> um, you, you might want this, but otherwise, the active, active suspension management, most people just leave it on comfort mode all the time. In the sports car, it, it actually lowers the car as well, but in, in this model, no, it just, just stiffens the ride. I don't know too many people that need the PASM in their Cayenne. Um, however, you do need to get the PASM if you're going to get some of these, the next two options. The next option is the adaptive air suspension. Now, this is an interesting one. $4,160, obviously $2,000 of that is adding the previous option, which is included in it, so it's about a $2,000 option. What does this option do? Well, it's a raising and lowering of the car through air suspension. Important if you're gonna, once again, be off-roading this car for some reason, you can raise, you can see in the options list here, you can press off-road and it raises it a couple of inches off the ground, it's pretty cool. Uh, and of course, if you're on the highway, you can really lower the car to its lowest point, maybe even get a little bit of fuel economy savings out of it. But, I don't know, uh, the steel springs that are standard, I personally prefer over the air suspension. Uh, the air suspension in this third generation is certainly improved. The previous generation air suspension felt a little floaty, you know, felt like you were actually on air sometimes and that was disconcerting for some people they didn't like the air suspension uh, this is a new system a three chamber system that uh, feels more like the standard springs but not quite there yet it's nice but four thousand dollars i don't know that anyone really needs it if yeah if you think you need to change the height of your vehicle uh, that's the option for you and the next one's an interesting one uh, also, this, is, this comes out of the, the sports cars. This was originally debuted a few years ago in the Porsche 911 Turbo S, the, the Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control. It's pretty cool. I've had it in one of my cars. Uh, obviously, it's very expensive because you need to get it in combination with the, the last two options. It's in this car that I'm driving here today. Basically, it uses electrical stabilizers to stop any body roll, and it does work. It does feel a little strange at first. You take a corner hard, you expect a big heavy vehicle like this to roll into the corners, and it does not. You can see it working here as I take the corner. Those stabilizers act on the opposite side. So if I do a hard right turn, you expect the body to roll left, but instead it stays perfectly flat. It is a pretty cool feature. Is it useful? <laughs> it's a performance feature. It's designed to allow you to take these cars on the track and uh, take corners faster because there's less body roll. Some people find it disconcerting as well. Uh, 
when you're used to having a little bit of body roll in your car and suddenly it corners flat, it, can, it, it actually can make some people feel a little car sick. I know that sounds strange, but that's certainly been my, my experience. It works, it definitely works. It's a really cool technology. It's just wildly expensive, and I don't know that too many people will ever need it. Uh, maybe in the top of the line turbo models, they might want it, but otherwise, eh. yeah. Pretty cool, pretty cool, but eh, so expensive, you can definitely untick that option. Uh, the next option is also, uh, a, coming from the sports cars, also debuted on the on the Turbo and the Turbo S a few years ago, rear axle steering. Now rear axle steering, some people in the sports car Porsches swear by this as being a must have. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a two feature or three feature option. It turns the wheels one way at lower speeds and the other way at higher speeds. This is the rear wheels I'm talking about. So uh, when you're on a track, it helps you, it helps you corner because it's bringing the rear round with you. Uh, and it does make a difference. People do see a difference on, on, in track times and sports cars with the rear axle steering. Uh, and at lower speed, it turns the opposite way and helps you take a corner. And that's really what it's about in the Cayenne. No one is ever going to be taking a Cayenne to its performance limits on a, on a track. So you don't worry about that side of things. What you're getting with the power steering, uh, what you're getting with the rear axle steering is better U-turns, better cornering. So it will cut about half the car's width off a U-turn. So if you do a lot of illegal U-turns in your town uh, and you want to sneak instead of taking up three lanes to do a U-turn, you can do it in two and a half lanes. Um, yep, that's, that's the feature for you. And you can see it working here as I take these corners. It doesn't, doesn't turn the wheel a lot, it's just enough to make a difference on U-turns. Uh, and of course, it also makes you get the power steering plus. Is it worthwhile? No. <laughs> you can skip through this option for sure. You're never going to notice that you don't have it. But yeah, if you want to improve your U-turning ability, maybe. Next, uh, sport tail pipe in silver changes on the Cayenne. It changes the oval tail pipes into the uh, four round tail pipes, which looks really nice, I think. If you like the look of the four tail pipes, maybe it's worth $1,000. Uh, a lot of people do this in conjunction with deleting the model logo to make people think they've got the next model up. Hey, <laughs> show off that you've got the fancier model. I don't know, you don't need to do that. I don't think no one's, no one's going to be looking down at you because you've got oval tail, tail pipes. I think they look just as nice. Uh, but yeah, if you like the look of the oval, of the two round tail pipes, the sportier tail pipes in black or silver, that's a thousand dollar option for you. Next option. <laughs> Don't do this. Oh my goodness. $3,220. So popular this option. <laughs> this is the sports exhaust system, which once again is a carryover from the sports cars. Uh, and it's a, it's a volume thing. You get a, you get a button that allows you to make the exhaust louder. Uh, it's not that much louder. And certainly on the six cylinder models, it really, you can notice a difference, but it's not a huge difference because Germany has rules about how loud exhaust is allowed to be these days, so they limit um, how loud these exhausts are. But there is an, there, you can tell the difference between it being on and off. But for $3,220 on a Cayenne, I, I just don't think people are going to care. Well, maybe you care. I don't care. I don't care if my Cayenne sounds a little louder in the exhaust. It's, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not a Mustang. It's not a sport. I don't know. It's... Why you'd do that, I don't know. It's a very expensive option, but I'm sure people are going to do it anyway. Uh, next is uh, a new option. A new option uh, coming across the entire range of Porsche cars. Uh, an option that sits between the sports brakes, the steel brakes, and the very expensive carbon ceramic brakes. These are carbon ceramic coated brakes, uh, sort of $3,500. Uh, they're white brakes. I think they're kind of ugly, but um, and they must be had in conjunction with uh, 20 inch wheels or bigger. Uh, what do they do? Well, they do a whole bunch of stuff. They, first of all, they increase the, um, the braking performance by about 30%. It's a 10 piston as opposed to six piston caliper set. And probably the reason most people are gonna get this on the Cayenne, it totally reduces the amount of brake dust that ends up on the wheel. So if you hate cleaning your wheels, this is the option for you. Even though it's kind of expensive, uh, yeah. That's, you know, once again, 
Carbon ceramic brakes are for people that race these cars. It's you get brake fade if you're braking from high speed, and this is a very heavy vehicle, so you're going to get a lot more. If you are crazy enough to be taking this on a racetrack, then yes, you probably want the carbon ceramic brakes or the coated brakes. But for most people, they're going to get this option just to reduce having to clean their wheels. So no one's really going to actually get this option because most people that own a Cayenne are going to take it through a car wash and they're going to wash the wheels for them. But yeah, if you do your own car washing and you hate that, then that's what that's all about. But yes, there is some performance improvements as well. It does improve braking. The brakes are fine without it though. And of course the next one is the same deal. This is the full carbon ceramic brakes, the yellow calipers. Uh, you must have 21 inch wheels or better. And once again, it's you're racing your car <laughs> on the track. This is a very heavy vehicle. You'll probably need carbon ceramic brakes. Not a, an eye-watering $9,000 for these brakes. I very rarely see the carbon ceramic brakes on the Cayenne, particularly on the base and S models. Okay, next is the Sport Chrono package, which is also a carryover from the sports cars and really doesn't do a lot in the Cayenne. Uh, the, the main feature is moving the sport buttons from the center console to this little switch on the steering wheel. And that also adds a sport response button in the center. And what does the sport response do? Uh, when you press it for 20 seconds, the gearbox tries to select the lowest and most powerful gear. <laughs> I don't know, you suddenly feel in a racy mood, <laughs> press the sport response and the car will be, you know. Uh, so, and it also adds the, the timing um, clock in the center console. What I'll say about that is, eh, I, because you're not going to be tracking this car, you don't need the track timer on this, on this vehicle. You're better off if you, if you really want the Sport Chrono package to get the next one, which includes the off-road clock, which is far more, I don't know, cool, I think, in an SUV. But $1,130 to have the sport mode button on the steering wheel. Here's the thing. In a sports car, yes, you probably put it in sport mode or sport plus mode moderately often. I do it a lot in my sports car. But in a Cayenne, you're leaving it in normal mode or comfort mode 99.999% of the time. So you don't need to move it to that little switch. Yeah, you're not, you don't need, so what does sport, maybe explain it this way. What does sport mode and sport plus mode do? Well, uh, they change a few things. They change uh, how the car selects the gears or selects the gear more aggressively. The throttle response changes, just, just makes it a little sportier. It doesn't add additional power to the car. The performance is more or less unaffected in a straight line. Yeah, if you think you're gonna be driving <laughs> your Cayenne like a sports car, then maybe this is worthwhile. Otherwise, skip past this $1,000, $1,130 option because you can get the little off-road clock separately. You'll see it further down in the, in the options. Uh, and that's really the highlight of this package, I think, in the Cayenne. And finally, uh, in performance, I don't know why this is in performance, uh, but this is a super popular option, maybe because it's so cheap, Power Steering Plus. This is a software upgrade. It just... Uh, makes steering at lower speeds below 30 miles an hour a lot easier and on the Cayenne it is super light like you can turn the steering wheel with your finger that's how light it is. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. The steering is super light anyway this just makes it even more light. What I say about this option is if you're not sure whether you want it or not get it because your dealer can turn it off if uh, once you get the car and you find the steering is too light they can turn it off but if you get the car and you find the steering is a little too heavy and you want it lighter, they can't turn it on if you didn't get it in the first place. $300, neither here nor there, I noticed. Just about everyone gets it. You really don't need it. Okay, on to interior. Luckily, uh, there aren't as many interior options on the Cayenne. Even though there's a lot, there aren't as many interior options on the Cayenne as there are in other Porsche cars. And... Uh, most of them can be skipped past, but let's dive into it. As I mentioned before, you can get the compass display um, clock, which is pretty cool, for only $330 instead of paying the $4,000 for the whole Sport Chrono package. I think that's a better deal. But that looks kind of cool on the dash. I like that as a little option. Still, $330, you can live without it. And then there's a bunch of seatbelt options. 
Now, seat belts are cool in that they can really jazz up the interior of a car. Like if I turn this here and we put the red seat belts, see? Pretty cool, huh? But, you know, $660, you really don't need to spend it. The thing about uh, colored seat belts is that they do show wear a lot more quickly than the black seat belts. So if you've got kids, dogs, uh, dirty adults, etc., etc., you will be cleaning the seat belts more often uh, than if you get the black ones. So perhaps stick to the black ones. But yeah, if you want to jazz up the interior of your car a little bit, colored seat belts is a way to do it. Uh, you can actually retrofit the colored seat belts afterwards. It's about a $1,500 cost, maybe a little more in the Cayenne. Uh, if, if you get it with black and then think, oh, I really like the red ones or the brown ones or the blue ones or whatever. Let's look at the blue ones. Go. Yeah, don't get that color. <laughs> Graphite blue. Looks like black. No one would ever notice. Yeah, I, actually, I made that exact same mistake in a previous Porsche of mine. I got the dark blue seat belts. They looked black. What a waste of $500. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to get the seat belts, at least get them in a brighter color so that they actually get noticed. Yeah, look at that. Seat belts in slate gray. They're black. They're basically black. Don't waste your money on those ones. My goodness, what a waste. Let's have a look at the truffle brown. Yeah, also, <laughs> don't waste your money on those ones. Okay, so if you're going to get them, just get them in the red or the chalk. The chalk, you can definitely tell the chalk ones. Here we go, chalk, there you go. But, yeah, I have, the, I have that color in my uh, Porsche 911 or similar color, and uh, I... You, it does show up marks that I do clean them quite frequently. Seat belts, what a waste of money. Uh, this next op option is the only option I'm going to throw my hands up and go, I have no idea. <laughs> An ionizer supposedly cleaning <laughs> the air or something, some wizardry. I'm going, to, I'm going to bow out and say I have no idea what, what the benefit of this $400 option is. I'm sorry. Maybe do the research yourself. It just sounds like witchcraft, <laughs> not in my car. Uh, Next one, driver memory package. Okay, this is this, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you have the eight-way seats, but you want the nice memory package, $400 gets you there. What does the memory package do? It's really very nice, actually. The memory package not only remembers where your seat should be, but where your steering wheel, you know, should be forward and back, up and down. Remembers where your mirrors are, and it remembers a bunch of stuff in the HVAC and the PCM. So you can set it so it all come, always comes to the same temperature, um, same, same settings with the vents and so forth. A lot of stuff gets captured by the memory package. It's very nice. And of course, you can have multiple memories and you can tie them to the key and all that sort of stuff. It's nice having the memory package. Obviously, that memory package is standard if you're getting the 14 or the 18-way seats. Ambient lighting. <laughs> this is a new a version of, uh, what do they used to call it? I forget, some, some sort of lighting package. Interior lighting package was what it used to be called. Ambient lighting is uh, the disco lighting for your car. Uh, when you turn this on, if you have a look here, you can get, you can, it adds a lot of lights to the dome, to the footwells, to the package areas. All over the car gets a whole bunch of extra lighting. And as you can see here, you can pick the color of that lighting purples, greens, blues, <laughs> so forth. But unless you happen to be an eight-year-old child, you're probably not going to have your interior of your car purple. Uh, you're going to leave it on white, uh, like any normal adult would. And when it's left on white, it's a very useful feature, particularly if you have a dark interior, blacks, greys, so forth. Because while the lighting is adequate in a Porsche Cayenne, once you add the ambient lighting, you can suddenly see everything. So if you've got kids and stuff and you're trying to find things at night, the ambient lighting fixes all the dark spots in the car. You can suddenly, you know, find that lost toy, cell phone, whatever, that you've lost in the car with the ambient lighting. And, of course, if, you, <laughs> if you're a bit of a party person in your car and you want <laughs> party colors, the ambient lighting does that as well. I love this option from the point of view that it suddenly makes the interior lighting work for me. Uh, I don't care about uh, having blues and greens, although I'm sure some of you uh, would love that. Um, get the same option in the Kia Soul as well. So, yeah, if you like a bit of Kia Soul, that's, uh, that's, that's the option. $400, not too bad. <laughs> okay, this next option, interior package painted. If you're the type of person that looks back on the Chrysler PT Cruiser and thought, man, that was a classy vehicle. The way they painted the interior, 
the same color as the exterior. I wish they'd do that in modern vehicles. Then this is the option for you, my friends. In my opinion, the worst thing you can do to a Porsche. What is it? Well, it's taking these uh, piano back black strips, these uh, contrast strips that are around the interior of the car and replacing them with a flimsy bit of plastic um, that has painted the outside color of the car. And it doesn't actually look that bad on the configurator, I must admit. But in real life, this looks terrible. <laughs> I cannot stress this enough because so many people do this. I have friends that have done this to their Porsches. And then you get in and you go, man, <laughs> interesting interior choice you have there. No, don't do this. It just, oh, it just looks so cheap and tacky. Uh, yeah, I see, I see this a lot in showroom cars as well. You get into like, a, like one of the Porsche sports cars. You open it up. Oh, it's a cool looking color on the outside. And you get inside and it's got the plastic painted interior. Whew. <laughs> Talk about drop the value of this car instantly. Just just looks so bad. I can, I can sort of understand why people do it because it kind of looks good on the configurator, but in real life it looks so tacky and so terrible. Two thousand dollars. It's the worst two thousand dollars that you can spend on your car. But then again, what what do I know? If if that really looks cool to you, go ahead and do it. But yeah, I can't. It's the worst option. It is by far the worst option. Well, maybe those painted ridiculous wheels. Yeah, if you're getting the, the ridiculous painted wheels that we talked about earlier, <laughs> this might be a good, you know, companion to those silly painted wheels. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't do that. And there's more than one version of this as well. As we get further down in the configurator, you'll see there's another version of this terrible option. Just don't do it. $2,000, destroy the interior of your car. Okay, on to heated seating front. $530. Uh, it's a reflection on the day and age that we live in that I consider heated seating now to be a must in all of my cars. Ah, oh, I know. What did we do before heated seating? It's so good, isn't it? Even if you don't live in a very cold climate, heated seating can still be quite good. Yeah, I really, it's a shame that Porsche charges $530 eye-watering dollars for this option, which is often free in just about every other make and model car out there but I think it's a must have. And then of course you can ch go up to a thousand dollars to get it in the rear. And then you can add another 850 to get the ventilation and 1700 to get the ventilation front and back. The whole, you know, once you've vented and heated your seats, you're up for a, a big slab of cash basically. The ventilation is probably more useful for people that live where you get hot summers. Uh, it's nice. If you've got hot leather on your seats, you hit that and it sucks the air away. Certainly very nice, but they, Porsche knows that people love these heat seating and ventilation options and they just charge, charge, charge ridiculous money for it. Luckily, they are also part of some of those uh, package that we talked about earlier. So yeah, if, if you're getting a package, you get the heated and vented seats, that's nice. And then part of that as well is the massage seat function, which really is massaging your back. Uh, the little airbags that blow up and you can set the order of intensity. That's a cool option. Once again, it, it's a little expensive. Well, not really when you consider how much the seat ventilation, which is part of the package, gets tied in. But if you're doing long journeys, it's nice to have the... I can't really demonstrate it because you can't see it on camera, but it, it just rolls, it blows up the airbags and different... You can, there's different programs to it. You set it on the PCM. Very nice. I like a bit of a massage seat, that's for sure. Uh, next is the four climate control. As, as you'd guess, it, uh, it replicates the climate control and the entire climate control into the back seat. So if you have people sitting in the back seat that want different temperatures than the people in the front, this is the way to go. A thousand dollars. It is very nice. Gives you the full piano black package. Uh, gives you all the seat heating and cooling um, switches if you've taken those options. But more importantly, it gives you the uh, blower feet, face, different temperatures, both sides. Do little Johnny and Susie in the back need such a fancy $1,000 option? Probably not. But if you're ever using your car for executive transport, you know, if, if this, this car is ever going to be used to take clients, if you're a real estate agent or someone that takes people in the back seat, this is something worth considering because it gives that person the freedom to set their own climate. It's very nice. $1,000. If you're never using the back seat, don't get it. If you've got clients in the back seat, it's certainly worth considering. 
Night Vision Assist. <laughs> this is a new fancy um, pushed by dealers option. It is pretty cool. I'll give them that. Uh, it is a night vision system, uses the cameras on the car to see things that you can't see with the naked eye. Does work very well. Uh, what's good about it is that it has the ability to recognize certain shapes. So if it sees a deer on the side of the road or a pedestrian, it'll, it'll, it'll send a warning to your dashboard or to the head up display if you take that option uh, that there's something that you're approaching that you can't see with your eyes. Very nice safety feature. The downsides of this system, well obviously it's quite expensive. And secondly, it is also kind of distracting as well because it's only displayed in the second multifunction screen next to the, next to the rev tachometer there, uh, which isn't a very big screen. So if you're looking at it, you're really actually taking your eyes off the road and it doesn't really give enough information for you to safely drive from that tiny little screen. So I think it can be a little distracting as well, but I, overall I think it's a very nice feature. Is it worth $2,420? Probably not. Uh, but yeah, if you do a lot of night driving or if, you, you know, if you're driving in an area where there's a lot of animals on the road and you're worried about that, totally worthwhile. Um, you know, kangaroo comes running across the road. Not that there's a lot of kangaroos around here, but you never know. Um, it's going to tell you. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. It's a bit of a toy, but, and it's an expensive toy, but yeah, you'll, you'll see the dealers push this pretty hard. You can live without it. Lane change assist, well, a lot of cars have had this for a long time. I'm pretty appalled that Porsche charge $1,000 for this, what should be standard feature now in a lot of cars, but it does work very well. Uh, some Porsches have the lights on the inside of the car, on the Cayenne, it's on the mirror. What does it do? Obviously, uh, it uses a radar in the back quarter of the car to recognize when there's cars in your blind spot or in an area on the lane next to you, so you shouldn't change lanes and hit that car. It does work very well, you can see it demonstrated here. As a car comes up beside me, you can see the light goes on, and as the car passes me, the light goes off. It's just a, it's a nice safety feature. Honestly, should be standard. Stop charging for these things, Porsche. Uh, next is the Adaptive Cruise Control, ACC. I'm a big fan of this option, and this is improved for this generation. It used to be a radar-only product, uh, and now it's radar and camera based, so it's a lot more accurate. What does it do? Well, adaptive cruise control uh, allows you to follow cars and your car will follow that car and increase and decrease speed uh, with that car. So you can take your foot completely off the accelerator and just follow behind another car. Uh, it really takes the strain of a long distance journey away from, you know, you don't have to be thinking about I know it sounds ridiculous that you should, you should ha always have your feet on the accelerator pedal, but this really does uh, make driving long distance a lot easier. Plus, it's a huge safety feature. Adaptive cruise control can react to things happening on the road so much faster than a human being can. So if the car in front of you suddenly hits something or brakes hard, your car is going to brake at exactly the same time with adaptive cruise control. It's a very nice feature. I love this feature. I've had it in one of my previous cars. I miss it, it's, it's, it's awesome, it's expensive unfortunately, uh, but it helps add a bunch of other safety features as well. Even when you're not using it, uh, the, the radar and the camera will, will warn you if, you if it thinks that you're not braking hard enough for a car that's slowing down in front of you. And in these days of distracted drivers, cell phone texting while you're driving, this is a great option to have because it will warn you if you're about to have a nose to tail uh, and if you're not braking hard enough, it'll increase the braking force for you to brake hard enough that you're not going to hit the car in front of you. So some cool safety features, but really I love it for what it was originally designed for, which is uh, following cars in traffic. And because it's enhanced now, it's better able to understand when cars merge in front of you or when there's corners, that type of thing. It's very clever at, at, knowing, at, at knowing its surroundings and knowing what the other cars are doing and reacting a lot better than you can as a human. But yeah, if you, maybe if you're never going to use it for that, but if, maybe if you're a bit of a distracted driver, it's worth considering as well. Very cool feature. Next is power sun blind for rear <laughs> side windows, $450, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, it, it, what's good about them is it allows you still to be able to see outside the car. So if it's for protecting children from sunlight, they don't tend to get as car sick then if you put up a, close the window by putting a towel or a t-shirt up there instead, you can still see through it. 
but $450, kind of expensive. That is a standard option in many cars in this price range. Shame on you, Porsche. Steering wheel heating. Ah, it's another one of these features which we've grown to think that we absolutely must have steering wheel heating. So I, own, I personally own two cars, one without steering wheel heating and one with steering wheel heating. And how spoiled am I that now in the winter, I'm, oh, I, can't, I can't take that car. <laughs> it doesn't have steering wheel heating. Yep, uh, all I say about steering wheel heating is if you live in very, where there's very cold winters, it's certainly a nice feature to have. And a lot of people get this feature and then can't figure out how to use it. On the Porsche, the button is down here uh, at the bottom of the steering wheel in between this, the, uh, this part of the steering wheel here. It's a little hidden, so that's how you turn it on. If you pay the $280 for steering wheel heating, very nice luxury feature. Next is the only other free, currently free option on the Porsche Cayenne, the smoking package. Are you a smoker? <laughs> Shame on you, stinky person. Uh, then you probably need the smoking package. It adds the ashtray to this a little hole here. And of course it adds a cigarette lighter to where the 12 volt socket is. That's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> smoker, you need the smoking package. If you're not a smoker, don't take it. You get the little cubby hole, you put your phone in there, whatever. Fire extinguisher, $140. You might say to me, hey Nick, that fire extinguisher looks very similar to the $30 fire extinguisher I can get at the supermarket. <laughs> you would be dead right. It is indeed the same fire extinguisher you can pay $20 to $30 for anywhere else. What you're paying for is the mounting of that fire extinguisher under the passenger, front passenger seat. Do you have a lot of fires in your car? <laughs> Are you the type of person that smokes around gasoline? <laughs> then yes, this is probably good for you. But otherwise, just buy a $30 fire extinguisher and keep it somewhere in the car, whatever. Not necessary. This is a carryover, once again, from the sports cars. The GT3 uh, sports cars tend to have these because they're on the track. You flip the car. <laughs> Actually, the uh, 991.1 GT3s burst into flames quite frequently, so the fire extinguisher is quite useful to have there. Otherwise, Save the $140, you don't need the fire extinguisher. Okay, next are a group of cosmetic changes that we're not gonna go into too much detail about. They're not functional, they're just changes in the dial colors. So if you've got the, the, the little clock up there, you can change it to white, <laughs> $420. All I'll say about this is that this can actually make it harder to read, but if you wanna have your dial white, you can waste $420 on that. Yeah. Don't bother. And then there's another seat belt. And then there's the cargo management system. Uh, cargo management system is pretty cool. If you have large objects in your trunk, like a big dog or something, and you don't, if you have a crash, you don't want that dog flying forward, you want to get this system. It protects you from that. Um, otherwise, yep, $420. Yeah, it's, it's a good protection. If you're, keeping, if you're keeping large heavy objects like big dogs or whatever in the back, then that's certainly worth considering. Uh, park assist front and rear <laughs> with surround view. This is another one of these deceptive, deceptively worded um, options because it makes you sound like you, you're buying the park, park assist front and rear. You're not. That is now a standard feature in these cars and, and so is the reversing camera. So you already have everything you need to safely park your car. However, for $1,200, you can add another three, I think it is, cameras to your car, and then it will give you the top-down view uh, when parking. And, it, and it's kind of cool, I guess, uh, if you have trouble with parking or you're parking in tight spaces, the top-down view does make parking a little easier. But, as I said, you have the, the beepers and the little radar screen that shows you how close you are to things, and the backup camera already standard in your car. You probably don't need to spend $1,200 on the on the top-down view. Next is something that ties in with the adaptive cruise control, uh, the Inno Drive, uh, which was originally, I believe, and I could be wrong on this, designed as a performance feature. It was certainly sold as that on the Panamera. And what it was originally intended to do was to uh, learn about road data through GPS and other cars using it and sharing that data so that the car could set itself up for corners and be responsive to driving conditions, etc., etc. <laughs> no one ever used that nonsense. 
What it's really now used for is these last two, the lane, uh, lane keeping and the emergency stop. The active lane keeping, as the name would suggest, helps you keep in your lane. <laughs> I know a few people that wander through lanes and this will stop you from that, uh, which is nice if you tend to wander lanes or do a lot of long distance driving, that's pretty cool. And the emergency stop. What is the emergency stop? Are you prone to passing out, falling asleep? Are you a drunk driver? <laughs> Do you have heart attacks while you're driving? This is the feature for you. Yes, if the driver stops responding, the car tries to wake them for a start, jerks the brakes and makes a bunch of noises and beeps and things, they still don't respond, then it will, as safely as it can, obviously it's a computer, it doesn't really know what's going on in the surroundings, bring the car to a stop in the lane you're in and then put the flash of lights on. How safe you are, Say you're on <laughs> I-95, you're cruising at 90 miles an hour and you pass out and it stops in that lane, you're probably going to be killed by the 18-wheeler behind you anyway. But yes, it will stop the car and then it will call the emergency services for you. I don't know. Yeah, might save your life. I don't know. But yeah, really, this expensive option is all about the active lane keeping. Probably skip that one as well. Next is one that I'm actually excited about, a head-up display. Woohoo! At last, Porsche. <laughs> Welcome to the 2000s. You have caught up with everyone else and offered a head-up display. What is a head-up display? Well, uh, it throws the it throws in information up on the windshield so it looks like it's on the road in front of you. It's wonderful, I think, because it allows you to get a bunch of information that you normally have to look down at the dashboard or down at the PCM4. Right there in front of you, you can keep your eyes on the road. I am a big fan of keeping my eyes on the road. I'm a big fan of everyone else keeping their eyes on the road. And that's what head-up displays do. And this is a particularly good one. This is a highly configurable head-up display. I've often had head-up displays in my previous cars and I've often thought, eh, it's pretty good, but I wish it would display this or this or this. And this one allows you to put whatever you like on the display. Super cool. Not for everybody though. Some people find head-up displays to be distracting, they don't like them, or they're too tall or too short, or they wear polarized sunglasses, not compatible with polarized sunglasses. So not for everyone, but I love the head-up display. It is a shame that they charge $1,700 for this feature that is normally four to $500 from other manufacturers, but hey, Porsche, <laughs> raping us <laughs> on options whenever they can. So head-up display, love it. Uh, and 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 integrates well with some of the other features. You know the, the 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 night vision thing I talked about. It will throw up the picture of the deer or the person, or whatever, on the head-up display. Uh, and with the active cruise control, it'll talk about where the distance in the cars and so forth. Um, it's it's very cool, very cool. Uh, next option is definitely, in my opinion, a nonsense option. Uh, vehicle keys painted uh, with a leather pouch. Yes. <laughs> You're leaving your keys probably in your purse anyway, but say you want to leave your Porsche key on your desk to show off to your co-workers and you've had it painted in a special colour, maybe it's a conversation starter, what a stupid thing to do. <laughs> Just, it's a key. Just leave it black, it's fine, but yeah, if you've got more money than cents, pay the $540 and get it painted with a nice little leather pat, patch, uh, pouch. Um, there's other options. Uh, there's an Alcantara version and other options further down there. Save your money. Uh, automatically dimming mirrors, uh, $490. Once again, this is an option that should be standard. It's standard in almost all other car brands these days. What is it? It's the, it's the little LED membrane that's in all three mirrors that uh, darkens the mirror when it sees a car come up with bright lights behind you at night. So it's an anti-glare feature. I love it. I absolutely love this feature, it works so well, it's just a shame you have to pay $500 for it. I believe it is part of the option packages though, so maybe you get it as part of that. And then, oh, and then this is the repeating uh, terrible option that we talked about before, the painting of the interior trim, but this time, instead of painting it to the outside colour, you can paint it to some other colour. <laughs> just say no, just say no friends to that. <laughs> tacky, <laughs> cheap looking option. Okay, we're making progress. We're on to interior leather and thankfully uh, there's nowhere near the number of leather options on the Cayenne as there is on the other models of Porsche. 
yeah, go across and have a look at the uh, the sports cars or the uh, <laughs> or the Panamera. You'll see <laughs> you can you can leather everything. But in the Cayenne, they keep it reasonably reasonable. Still, a lot of expensive, unnecessary options in here. We'll skip through them. I'll explain them to you. So leather interior package is basically what I was talking about with that painted package. You turn this on, it takes away that uh, the trim here and puts it leather to match the leather in your car. And further down, you'll see uh, an option to change the leather, but to a different color leather. I actually have this in my 911. I like it. Uh, but yeah, $2,000. It's a lot of money. Ha, you don't need it. Trust me. Center console armrest with Porsche Crest. So I'll talk about this and the next one, which is the center console armrest with the model logo and the crest on the headrest and the crest on the headrest front and rear. None of these have any function to them. Arguably, when you have the center console upgraded with the model logo or the crest, it does seem to feel a little softer, but not noticeably so. All you're doing here is adding the Porsche Crest or the model logo to different parts of the car. Personal taste, it's a lot of money. <laughs> uh, it's very popular in the sports car to get the crest on the, on the seats. It's a historical thing to have the crest on the seats, so a lot of people get the crest on the seats. In an SUV, no one, no one cares, <laughs> no, one, no one's going to notice, but yeah, if you want to you know, have the, uh, the crest there on the seats, hey, knock yourself out, pay the $570 to get on the front and rear. No real function though. Okay, and then on to floor mats. Um, <laughs> this is certainly a waste of money area, I think. You know, floor mats are a wear and tear item. I don't think you should be spending a whole lot of money on fancy uh, leather edged floor mats because floor mats, A, you don't really notice they're on the floor and B, they're really designed to be swapped out as they get crappy. You know, I, I like to swap out the floor mats in my car. You pay $50, pay $100, get brand new floor mats every year or two years, and it just freshens up the interior. Whereas if you've gone and spent $600 on, or $800 on floor mats, you're probably less likely to be wanting to swap them out. So yeah, floor mats, you don't want to get the fancy floor mats. There's, there's a couple of options there. One with uh, the deep pile floor mats, a thick carpet, pretty luxurious. Maybe, maybe an option if you're using this as an executive transport car, just to you know, spruce up the interior, whatever, formats. <laughs> don't, don't waste a lot of money on fancy formats, please. Uh, and then, once again, there's a load space mat for the rear with fancy stitching on it. Once again, it's, it's the trunk. No one's going to be in the trunk. You don't need to have fancy stitching on the trunk. Save you $340. Uh, and then there's this interior trim. This is the, this is the, the, the leather trim with a deviated color. That is, instead of having the leather trim around the edges the same color as the inside of the car you can have it red or whatever two thousand five hundred and ninety dollars yeah <laughs> uh, seat centers and deviated leather this is this is pretty popular a lot of people like to do this if you want to brighten up the interior the center of the seats you can if it's a black interior you can have it as white pretty cool looking two thousand eh. dollars yeah it's, it's just a way of making the interior a little different it is quite expensive though uh, an interior package with deviated stitching, <laughs> $4,830. Anyone that follows my uh, channel will know that I'm a bit of a fan of deviated stitching, but <laughs> it, it's expensive. It's stitching along the edges here, stitching on the dashboard, stitching everywhere else. It's, it's $5,000 for some stitching. If you really want the stitching, buy the two-tone leather combination. That is a much... Uh, more effective way of getting stitching, much cheaper way of getting the stitching. Yep, don't wanna, you don't want to spend that much money on individual stitching, just get it with a package. Uh, and then, then they package this, the seat centers and the stitching all together for <laughs> an incredible 6,700, just say no. Uh, and then there's another vehicle key option. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, on to Alcantara. Thankfully, there's not too many Alcantara uh, options. What is Alcantara? It's a, it's a fabric um, design, mostly designed, originally designed I think for race cars. It's fireproof, it's lightweight, it gives a uh, good grip feeling. People often like it on a steering wheel in a, in, a, in a sports car or a racing car because it gives you good grip on the steering wheel. It's an option on this car, almost $500. 
no, you don't want, honestly, you don't want it. Um, it. It will mismatch because there's no really no other Alcantara in the car. And while it does feel nice, the, the oil on your hands gets into the Alcantara and mats it down in, in a matter of weeks. So you've got to constantly clean this, these steering wheels and they do wear out over time. So the fluffiness of the Alcantara does wear out as you clean it over and over again. You don't want it, you don't want it. <laughs> and then there's the roof lining in Alcantara. So in the 911s, the roof lining is Alcantara as standard. And it's nice, it's, it's arguably a little bit of a noise dampener, I think, but I don't really notice. Uh, and no one looks at the, the ceiling of your car anyway, it's the normal cloth ceiling matches with the interior color. But if you want to spend $1,700 changing it to Alcantara, knock yourself out. Totally not necessary, no, one, no one's going to notice. Uh, and then of course you've got the key, <laughs> painted key with the pouch in Alcantara 500. Okay, on to wood. Uh, wood, all the wood features, uh, there's no functionality here so I'm not going to go into too much detail. And it's pretty tricky to know what the wood looks like because few uh, dealership stock cars with the wood interiors, it's a, a, a certain type of taste. Personally I like the wood in the Cayenne, it, it looks kind of old British classy, <laughs> if that's a thing. Um, and there's lots of different options as you can see there. What I will say about the wood, uh, so you can get the wood interior around the edges where we were talking about the leather instead of the piano black. I think it looks nice. It's kind of expensive. There's the red gum on there, that's nice. But so you get the interior uh, package, which I think is good. And then people go overboard and get the steering wheel as well. I would caution you on getting the steering wheel. Firstly, it looks bizarre, in my opinion, but that's just me. And secondly, uh, it's wood with a resin coating. So it's a hard resin coating. So it's nowhere near as comfortable as the regular leather steering wheels. Doesn't, it's not soft, it's hard, it's cold, it's, it's not as nice to touch. And as I said, it looks kind of odd. <laughs> just say no to wood steering wheels. This is not a ship. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, those are the wood, wood interiors, wood trim, they can be quite expensive, but yeah, if you're into a wood interior, do it. Uh, and same, same really is, is can be said for the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber interior, once again, it's a, it's a, it's a lightweight material, not that it's saving any weight in, in, the, uh, in the Cayenne, but if you love the look of carbon fiber, you can do the, spend the $2,000 to get the interior, and you can also do the steering wheel on carbon fiber once again, I caution you on the carbon fiber steering wheel. It is also resin coated, so it's a hard resin coated, so it's a cold, hard feel. It doesn't feel anywhere as nice as the leather. But if you love the look of carbon fiber, that could be the way to go. Carbon fiber and the aluminium, as you'll see down below, also adds and some options for door sill guards that are lit up. And <laughs> uh, that are personalized. The personalized door sill guard carbon fiber 4000. <laughs> so what this is, is when you open the door there's a door sill there and you can have it so it lights up when you open the door. Honestly no one notices. Uh, and you can have a personalized wording on it. So you, can say, you can say Nick's awesome car. <laughs> if you're that type of person. <laughs> I don't know why people do. I, it, I've seen it done. It definitely gets done. I don't know if you're a I don't know. <laughs> someone that's into having their name or some personal logo embossed into their car, this could be the $4,000 option for you. My question is, what do you do when you go to sell the car? Because no one wants to buy, <laughs> no one wants to buy a car that's got your silly logo or name embossed on it. I don't know. It's, uh, that is certainly a super luxury option that most people can skip past. And once again, there's a floor mat option, <laughs> $1,300 floor mat. <laughs> no, no friends, no, 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 no. Resist the $1,300 floor mats. And then there's the aluminium or aluminum um, uh, textures in interior. I like this one. This, this, for dark interiors, this sort of brushed uh, textured aluminium is beautiful. I, I love the contrast that it provides. $1,000 kind of expensive. It is, it is also a lot more resistant to fingerprints and marks than the piano black standard. So it's something that's worth considering as well. And then you've got the, the door sills and then the, <laughs> then the personalized lit up ones as well. <laughs> 3, 000, that's a cheaper way of getting it. It's only 3,370, bargain, bargain. Definitely get the, uh, 
the personalized uh, aluminum or aluminum eliminate <laughs> lit up door sills. Ah, we're on the home run, friends. Into the audio and communications. Last one. Oh, how long has this video been? It's taken forever. <laughs> so, uh, smartphone compartment. Uh, this is under the armrest, and it, if your phone is compatible, it'll charge your phone just by putting it in there, and it also extends the reception range. It adds an aerial to it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty much designed to get the smartphone out of your hand and into the glove box and that is the problem with this is that I see people buy this option but never actually use it because they like to keep keep my precious near me <laughs> I want my precious in my hand or where I can see it at all times so uh, yeah not always used even though it does work it's quite cool but yeah, it means putting your phone away where you can't see it a lot of people don't have that discipline then there's the Bose sound system $1200 I say yes to this. I know, it's an expensive option. So, the base uh, stereo is 150 watts, which might sound like a decent amount, but in this day and age, not really. It's what I would describe as barely adequate. You can hear this, the, the music, it doesn't have a lot of bass, it doesn't have a lot of balls to it, but it works. And if, you, if you're an old guy like me, you can remember back in the day when we had custom stereos and 150 watts was actually quite a lot, but for such a big vehicle these days, 150 watts is pretty, pretty weak. And the Bose surround system, which is 700 and something watts, fixes that. And they do such a beautiful job with this. Uh, you get a bunch of additional features on the PCM where you can adjust uh, the Bose uh, response to all of the different sources, like whether it's a radio, satellite, off your iPhone, whatever, can all, all have different adjustments, but it just gives it a bunch of balls. It gives it a bunch of grunt. You can rock down to whatever music or audiobooks or whatever you play in your car. Um, it really gives it a, a significant boost and they do such a nice job. So expensive option, but I think well worthwhile, uh, if, particularly if you enjoy listening to music loud in your car, which I do. Uh, the Bose system, really, really very nice. Which leads us to the Burmeister system, even nicer, but $7,000 for a stereo upgrade. Mm. So here's how they trick you into getting that. Be warned. <laughs> so I, I am one of the people that brought the Burmeister in a previous Porsche of mine. Uh, and the reason I bought it is because they had two cars side by side in the showroom, one with and one without. So I sat in one and I was, oh, yeah, the Bose is really nice. I can't see why I'd need more than that. And then I went and sat in this next one with the Burmeister, and I was, wow, you can really notice the difference. Yeah, it's a really high fidelity. Yeah, I'll definitely get this. And so I paid all the money to get the Burmeister. So here's the trick. When you're in the showroom, of course, you don't have any road noise, any engine noise, any of the other stuff that's impacting on you. Once you get on the road, it's far less noticeable, the difference between the, the Bose and the Burmeister. So you really have to be a bit of an audiophile to justify spending $7,000 on a sound upgrade. And if you do, definitely get the, 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 uh, the glass, the insulated glass to reduce the sound coming into the car. But yeah, for 99% of us, the Bose is all we need, $1,200. It's, uh, it's expensive, but it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> and then next is a somewhat ridiculous option. If you happen to have been in a coma for the last 25 years and you've just woken up and you're buying your Porsche Cayenne and you're thinking, boy, I hope there's somewhere that I can listen to my physical media. <laughs> Porsche have the option of the six CD DVD changer. <laughs> you can pop your CDs in there and listen to your music that way. It takes up a space in the glove compartment. Do not get this option. Even if you do happen to have some CDs lying around, first of all, get with the times. <laughs> Convert them to MP3s or whatever. <laughs> Don't just have CDs. Secondly, this stupid changer uh, is known for not actually ever being able to read any CDs or DVDs. If there's any sort of copy protection on them, if they're copies or whatever, it just doesn't read them anyway. What a waste of $560. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, and that's true of the next two options as well. The rear seat entertainment. Also, options as a carryover from the 1990s when we used to have cars with the screens on the back to keep the kids quiet. Maybe you still need that, but these days, what child doesn't have some phone or iPad or, 
or tablet, some device that entertains themselves with their own movies, games, whatever. You don't need it on the back of the seat. The, so no one buys this rear seat entertainment system anymore. Um, but the only upside to doing it this way is that it is ISO compliant. So they've, they're properly fixed to the back of the seat. So in the, in the event of an accident, <laughs> you don't have sharp iPads flying around the cabin. It stays where it is. But I think most kids these days are going to use their personal devices as opposed to the limited rear seat entertainment option here. So that's $2,000. You can save all the $400, which just preps it if you want to do it at a later date. So that's it. That's all of the options. Congratulations for making it through my options video. Um, there's delivery experience as well, but that's just uh, where you get your deliver car delivered to or European delivery, which is awesome. You can pick your car up. You have to prepay the car before you go, um, but you can pick your car up in Europe, drive it around uh, for a few weeks. I don't know how long they're going to offer this for. The, I know the German government are pretty keen to get American spec cars off their roads, so it might not always be offered. But yeah, that's a pretty cool experience if you can, if you can afford the time to do that. But yeah, you've made it through. <laughs> this excruciatingly long video. Um, if you have watched the entire video, almost certainly you're going to get a letter from the Queen congratulating you. <laughs> uh, yep, uh -uh. I'm losing my voice. Now, how long this video has been, it's unbelievable. I thank you for watching. I hope this has been useful for you guys looking to buy this car. If you have any questions that I haven't answered in this video, feel free to email me below. Just be warned, I can get over 100 emails a day, and so sometimes I just can't get to them all. So um, if, you, if you need an email answered, sometimes you have to email me more than once for me to get to it, but I'm always happy to help people uh, answer questions on configuration, always happy to help people with the buying of a Porsche. Uh, sometimes I even refer people to my local dealership if they're not getting the deal at their local deal dealership. That sometimes works out quite well. I'm here to help. Um, uh, because I'm a big Porsche enthusiast. I like people to get the right car. I don't like to see people ripped off. So I'm always here to help you configure your car correctly. And if you want to ever want to help me, if you say, oh, wow, Nick, I find your, your videos very useful. You're always, you're always very entertaining or whatever. i always laughing at you, Nick. Um, feel free to go and buy one of my T-shirts or my offensive stamps or a rapid dry towel from my shop. That, that's always a great way to support my channel. But otherwise, yes. Any questions, let me know either in the comments or email me directly. Always happy to help. Good luck with the purchasing of your Porsche Cayenne. They are magnificent cars. Just don't spend too much on options. It's still going to be magnificent, even if you don't get the colored wheels. Anyway, thanks as always, everyone, for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye then.